what amazing love that would be willing to chase us to the ends of the earth. What amazing love that in relentless pursuit would be unwilling to let go of even a single one of us. What amazing love that even with all of our flaws, our imperfections, our shortcomings, our misunderstandings, the way that we express ourselves that's outside of divine design and the original intention of the one who has made us. What amazing love from a father who is good, who is good, who is good beyond a definition simply of what we would think good means. And oftentimes in his own definition of good comes to us and encounters us. The scriptures are filled with God pursuing men, pursuing women, coming after those that he has created, those that he loves, those that he longs to be in relationship with. But oftentimes it's the ones on the other end of the encounter that misunderstand the God that they face. And maybe you find yourself today in a place where you've encountered a God that you don't understand. <laughs> where you have found a God that is other than the way that you would want him to be. Maybe you've encountered a God that is different than the way you would like him to be. Maybe he doesn't act like you want him to act. Maybe he doesn't say the things that you want him to say. But at the end of the day, the thing that has to be asked and has to be faced by all of us is... Will we walk with a Jesus that we simply cannot control? Will you walk with a Jesus that at times you're not going to be able to understand? Will you give your life to a God that you cannot manipulate, that you cannot leverage your own faithfulness against? Will you give your life to a God that cannot be controlled by all of the manipulative efforts that we let run free from our hearts? Our walk with Jesus is not a game of control. It's not a giant chess match where we try to control the board and make the moves and determine the discussion at our own pace, at our own progression. But he says, come and follow me. You come and follow me. Many a men we find in the scriptures that encountered a God that they didn't understand. Jonah would be one. In chapter one, we find the word of the Lord comes to Jonah. And Jonah encounters a God that he does not understand and in fact does not really agree with. And Jonah decides to turn and run from God. And you see what's interesting about running from God is that many of us even right now are running from God in ways that look spiritual because they seem to be moving forward. But we know that we've not given ourselves to the thing that God has spoken to us. We know that we're not emptying our life into what it was that the word of the Lord came to us saying. And it does not matter to me if it's producing results, if it's producing the praise of men. It does not matter to me if the applause of the crowd is being given over to you. If in your own heart you know that you've run from the God that you don't understand. And though you may be doing spiritual things, though you may be applying your life to spiritual methods and rhymes and reasons you know in your heart that just like Jonah you've turned and you run but you see life has a way of working itself around back into encounter with God because many of us have had a chapter one experience where Jonah encounters the Lord and many of us find ourselves in chapter two which is where all of life is now happening to Jonah and Jonah finds himself in trial he finds himself in trouble. He finds himself experiencing a lot of heartache because he's not given himself over to what it was that God was saying to him. But I'm thankful for chapter three because in chapter three, God comes back to Jonah. Chapter three shows us that it doesn't matter how many wrong turns we take, God is still waiting for you. Chapter three proves to us that it doesn't matter how many mistakes may happen. It doesn't matter how many times we've done wrong. It doesn't matter how many times we've run away from what it was that God might have been saying, that God is good and in his own being good comes looking for us in a chapter three experience. That sure there's chapter one and I thank God for chapter one, but you might find yourself in chapter two. You might think that because of where you are right now, there's no way that you can connect again with what 
what it is that God is saying. And if that is you, I tell you today that he's reaching out to you. I tell you today that he is longing for you. I tell you today that the same word that came back to Jonah in chapter three was the same word that came to him in chapter one. That God had not changed his mind about Jonah. Maybe you feel like God has changed his mind about you because of where you are, because of the turns you've taken, because of where life may have you sitting right now. God has not changed his mind about you. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. The word of the Lord came a second time to Jonah. The word of the Lord came a second time to Jonah. I want you to insert your name instead of Jonah's name. To believe once again that God knows right where you are. To believe with all of your heart that he's not forgotten about you. He's not overlooked you. That your time has not passed. I pray right now that your heart would begin to burn in your chest. I pray right now that with great fire, the word of the Lord would return to you once again. I pray right now that no matter where you've buried it, that no matter how far you feel you've walked away from it, that the word of the Lord would return in your life, that it would resurface, that you would be reminded of the goodness of God and the purity of encounter that you first knew when you saw him, when you beheld his glory. Lord, let it be, even as you chased Jonah down, Chase your sons and daughters. Chase them to the farthest corners of the earth, Lord, I ask you. That you might have a people for yourself willing to give their lives into what you are saying to them. Lord, help us to be a people of your voice. A people moving with you in the place of encounter. Help us, God, I pray, to move from chapter two to chapter three with all of our hearts. Come on, I'm simply gonna ask you to lift your hands right now. Come on, lift your hands right now. Lord, help each and every single one of us. Help each and every single one of us. We wanna be a people of your voice. We wanna know you, Lord. We wanna move with you, Lord. 